Have you ever wondered why croissants are crescent-shaped? Ever wondered how these buttery and flaky delights became a worldwide snack sensation? Stick around, subscribe, and you might be surprised by the answer. The croissant is a popular pastry with French origins. Its exact origin is a subject of some debate, but it is widely believed to have been inspired by the Austrian Kipferl, a crescent-shaped baked good. The story goes that the croissant was introduced to France in the 19th century by Austrian Princess Marie Antoinette, who married French King Louis XVI. Tinks. However, some historians argue that the croissant's development in France predates Marie Antoinette's time, and its true origin is more complex. It is suggested that the croissant was already being made in France in the early 19th century, and that French bakers may have adapted the kipferl to create the flaky, buttery pastry we now know as the croissant. The modern croissant's characteristic layers and flakiness are achieved through a process called laminating, where layers of butter are folded into the dough through a series of folds and turns. This process creates the distinct texture and flavor that have made the croissant a beloved pastry worldwide. Regardless of its exact origin, the croissant has become an integral part of French culinary culture and is enjoyed globally as a delicious and iconic pastry. The French transformation of the croissant involves a distinctive process known as laminating, which is responsible for the pastry's flaky and layered texture. The basic ingredients for croissant dough include flour, water, yeast, salt, and sometimes sugar. Some recipes may also call for milk. The dough is mixed until it forms a smooth, elastic consistency. A crucial element in the croissant's transformation is the incorporation of butter in layers. A block of butter is usually placed between sheets of parchment or plastic wrap and pounded or rolled into a flat sheet. This sheet is then folded and chilled. The laminating process involves folding and rolling the dough to create multiple layers separated by thin sheets of butter. The dough is rolled out and the butter block is placed in the center. The dough is then folded over the butter, and this process is repeated several times, with resting periods in between to prevent the butter from melting. The repeated folding and rolling create hundreds of thin layers, resulting in the flaky texture characteristic of croissants. After the laminating process, the dough is shaped into a large rectangle. It is then cut into smaller triangles or rectangles, depending on the desired final shape of the croissants. Each piece is rolled up, starting from the wide end to form the crescent shape or other desired shapes. The shaped croissants are allowed to proof, giving the yeast in the dough time to ferment and the pastry to rise. This contributes to the light and airy texture. The proofed croissants are baked until they become golden brown and achieve a crispy exterior. The heat causes the butter to evaporate, creating pockets of air and giving the croissant its distinctive flakiness. The French transformation of the croissant is a labor-intensive process that requires skill and precision. And it is this craftsmanship that contributes to the pastry's renowned quality and taste. The result is a delectable, buttery pastry with a crispy exterior and tender, flaky layers on the inside. From the streets of Paris to the corners of the globe, croissants soon became a symbol of indulgence and sophistication. In the mid-20th century, mass production and globalization brought this French delight to breakfast tables worldwide. But did you know that the journey wasn't all smooth sailing? In the 1980s, a war of the croissants erupted between France and the United States, with accusations of imitations and debates over authenticity. Now, let's spice things up with some intriguing croissant trivia. Did you know that the world's largest croissant was over 3,000 feet long, created in the Netherlands? Or that there's a National Croissant Day celebrated on January 30th each year? And if you're ever in the mood for a luxurious splurge, you can find a $1,000 croissant topped with gold leaf in New York City. Talk about a golden breakfast. And there you have it, food historians, the incredible journey of the croissant from Vienna to Paris and beyond. Who would have thought that a pastry with such humble beginnings could become a global snack sensation? If you enjoyed uncovering the layers of croissant history with us, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe for more delicious content and let us know in the comments which food story you'd like us to explore next. Until next time, keep savoring those food stories and I'll catch you in the next video. Bon appétit!